Hey, what is up, everybody? I'm here to give you my WWE NXT review for December 21st, 2016. So I'm nearly done. I'm almost caught up. I think I have this episode and maybe one more. I think that's how I think that's how it's going. Um, so I, I'm making progress. Um, so uh, let's kind of like look ahead into this episode. I'm gonna do the same thing I did for the uh, last two reviews, where I'm just gonna watch it in sections and then. Uh, Kind of review it as it goes along. So we have um, Dario um, Bonato. I don't know how to say your last name. Taking on Billy Kay. You know, obviously this is um, back to when uh, Billy Kay and Peyton Royce um, left Dario high and dry in the six-woman tag team match. So I think, you know, this match makes some sort of sense to happen. Um, not only a huge fan of Dario right now, though. I think she's okay right now. I think she's that good tough girl to have. Uh, maybe she can impress me in this match, but Bailey Kay I'm really enjoying, so I kind of want to see this match. Um, and then we have the match that I really want to see in the show, and that is the uh, Fatal 4-Way Elimination number 1 Contenders match um, between um, Aldrana Cien and Alma, uh, hold on, Aldrana Cien and Almas, Bobby Roode, um, Roderick Strong, and Ty Dillinger. The winner of this match would become the number 1 contender to the NXT Championship, and this match I really want to see. I actually can't wait to see this match. I think it's you know, um, a match I'm looking forward to a, a lot. So that, I think those are like the only matches really um, that have been announced ahead of time. So now that I've kind of talked about them, uh, let me watch the episode and give my review on it. Okay, so we have the first match on the show. It's uh, Billy Kay with Peyton Royce versus Dario Berenado. Um This is actually an okay matchup here. Dario Bariano pretty much dominates the whole match. It just beats the crap out of uh, Billy Kay. And eventually uh, Peyton Royce pulls Billy Kay out of the ring. And Billy Kay and Peyton Royce are just going to leave. But Dario goes after him, hits a wicked right hand onto uh, Royce, and tosses Billy Kay into the ring. And Billy Kay has the referee distracted. And Peyton Royce um, tosses, um, pulls. Um, Dahlia's leg off the apron and sends her ribs first back for about well, back first into the apron and Billy Kay wins with a big boot um, and gets the victory and afterwards Peyton Royce tosses Dahlia outside the ring and Billy Kay and Peyton Royce grab microphones and Billy Kay says that um that is everybody's fate in the women's division when they go up against us and um they say that Asuka th um doesn't think that there's any competition left in NXT oh please and uh, she says that the competition's right here, and when you're woman enough to face us, um, we'll be waiting. So overall, I thought they uh, this was a pretty good segment. It was a nice way to make Billy Kay look strong. So, uh, and it's uh, you have a lot of women who could possibly be going for that NXT Women's Title, which I like. Um, and, the, and they do, and they are trying to rebuild the women's division since they lost it all due the to due to the draft and other things like that. So I did like I did like this uh, match and segment here. Not, not a great perfect match, but I, I did like it. Okay, the next match was uh The Authors of Pain with Paul Ellowin Winside versus John Ortigan and Anthony Bowen, I believe their names were. And um this was a squash. Um The Authors of Pain just toss around um Anthony and just beat the crap out of him and then uh John Ortigan tries to escape, but um, one of the authors of Pain's behind him, and they beat the crap out of him too. And they hit the double sandwich power bomb, and then they power bomb um, Anthony right under John Ortigan. Actually, they power bomb John Ortigan onto Anthony. Sorry, and uh, they're about to hit their um, the final chapter, but then the referee stops it um, and just stops the match. Um, it looked like that. Uh, Anthony really got hurt because um, when they power bombed him, they power bombed him right um, on. They, when they power bombed John Ortigan on him, they power bombed him like right on his face. So it looked like he could have gotten knocked out here. Um, I thought that was pretty dangerous. I think the authors of pain need to be a little bit more careful um, because they can be reckless at times, and this was kind of an example of that. And then um, afterwards, Paul Ellerman says that all roads lead to, to San Antonio, and whoever. Um, is the NXT Tag Team Champions um, is in for a bad night because the Authors of Pain are going to be the next NXT Tag Team Champions. 
and then that was it. But overall, I thought this was good. Just like I said, the Elders of Pain need to be a little bit more careful about who they wrestle. I mean, like when they're when they're wrestling. Okay, I forgot to mention that on commentary for this show, we had Percy Watson, Corey Graves, and Tom Phillips. I just forgot to mention it. I've done three of these, so give me a break. Um, and the next thing that happens is uh, Asuka gets interviewed, and she talks about how Bailey Kay and Peyton Royce are making a mistake if she thinks that they are competition because they're not. And then Nikki Cross comes up and has like a creepy face-off with uh, Asuka. So I don't know which direction they're going with for the NXT Women's Title Maths. If it's going to be Nikki Cross, if it's going to be Peyton Royce, if it's going to be Bailey Kay. Uh, the one I would prefer is probably Bailey Kay because I think that would be the better matchup. So I hope that's the direction they go. Um, and then they play a uh, NXT Fatal 4-Way um, hype video to kind of hype you up for the Fatal 4-Way match, which I enjoyed this. It shows uh, Ty Dillinger and who we beat to qualify. And he talks about, you know, how... Um, he didn't like the way that he won his match, but he said it, you know, it's a victory, but he wants to win the right way. And he said that um, he needs to win this match because he's come up short on so many occasions and he needs to win this match to prove that he belongs in NXT. And then um, it shows Adrian, it shows how Adrane Cien almost qualified. And he talks about, you know, how... Uh, he how no way Jose the person that he beat is a nobody and he says that um he wants to win the NXT championship to shut everybody up um and that he and because he doesn't care about anybody else all he cares about is himself and um then Roderick Strong talks about how um how he um worked all um very hard to get to the WWE just like everybody else has but the difference is that. He's a champion, and after um, this match, everyone is going to see that he is made to be a champion. And then Bobby Roode talks about, um, you know, how uh, he's glorious, and he wants to make that NXT championship glorious. And he says that he, he debuted this year, um, and he talks about, you know, how uh, he beat Aldrani Cianomas in step one, and then step two, he beat Ty Dillinger um, in his hometown, in his homecoming. And he talks about how Roderick Son's only been here 10 minutes and that he's not real competition. Um, and that was it. Overall, I, I enjoyed this video pack because it was a nice way to really hype me up to want to see the um, Fatal 4-Way match. So I thought this was uh, really good stuff. And, I, you know, it, made everybody, it gave everybody purpose for being in the match. So I thought that was good. So overall, it was a uh, good hype video package. Okay, so now we had the main event. The main event was the uh, Fatal 4-Way NXT Championship number one contenders elimination match. Um, Bobby Roode versus Andrana Cien Almas versus um, Roderick Strong versus Ty Dillinger. And overall, this was a really good uh, Fatal 4-Way match. At first, all three pe competitors except for Andrana Cien Almas just start having a face-off. And Almas is just going to let everybody fight it out. And Bobby Roode gets out of the win. But um, Strawn and Dillinger go after him and just start beating the crap out of him. And then Roderick Strawn, um, and then um, Adronis and Almas takes out Dillinger on the outside with a drop kick. And then um, Roderick Strawn dives on everybody. And then Adronis and Almas dominates the matchup for a while. He just really gets the heat on uh, Roderick Strawn. Uh, but Roderick Strawn continually makes a comeback. And then Bobby Wu dominates the matchup. Um, he ended up he ends up uh, hitting a suplex and a neckbreaker on um, Ty Dillinger. Um, Roderick Strong ends up hitting a dive on the outside on everybody, uh, which was cool. Um, but everyone, not everybody, fell at the same time. Almost didn't really fall when he was supposed to, so that was kind of weird. Um, and then Ty Dillinger makes a comeback, um, goes for the tiebreaker on Almost, but he counters and he hits the uh, double knees into the corner. Um, and he, he, uh, goes to, um, eliminate, um, Dillinger, but then Roderick Strong hits the set kick on, uh, Almas and eliminates him, and then it comes down to, uh, so then it's down to Roderick Strong, Ty Dillinger, and Bobby Wood, and, uh, then Ty Dillinger hits the tiebreaker on, um, Roderick Strong and eliminates him, so then it's just down to, um, Ty Dillinger versus Bobby Wood, which I thought made complete sense for them to come down to these two. You have... Um, 
you know, the the history from NXT TakeOver Toronto. So I thought it made sense for that to come down to these two. And they just started exchanging blows with each other. And um, Ty Dillinger tries, um, um, starts beating the... Um, just starts going off um, on uh, Bobby Wu. But then Bobby Wu hits a clothesline. And um, goes to get a steel chair since there's no disqualifications. And he tries to uh, hit... Um, Dillinger with the chair, but he ends up hitting a super kick and Rude kicks out of it. Um, he goes for the um, tiebreaker, but then um, Bobby Rude hits the sp counters with a spine buster, and uh, but um, Dillinger kicks out, and then Dillinger hits a tiebreaker and Rude still finds a way to kick out, which I popped for, and he try um, so Dillinger doesn't know what to do, so he tries to do it off the top rope, but uh, then Bobby Rude. Um, is able to get out of it, and Dillinger lands badly on the top rope, and then Bobby Roode hits the uh, glorious DDT for the win, and he becomes the number one contender to the NXT Championship. I thought this Fatal 4 match was a really good match, and uh, now that means at NXT TakeOver San Antonio, um, we're going to have the title match. It's going to be NXT Champion Shinsuke Nakamura versus Bobby Roode. It's been made official, and... Um, I can't wait to see that match. It's actually a match I've wanted to see Bobby Wood have since he came to NXT. And uh, I really don't know who could win at NXT TakeOver San Antonio. Because you have Shinsuke Nakamura, who's the main, who's like a big drawing point and the big face of NXT. But you have Bobby Wood, who's just really been riving a wave of momentum since coming to NXT. And I ha think having him, have, and I think he deserves to have this NXT championship. So I really don't know what direction they're going to go with. So I can't wait to see what happens uh, once it gets to NXT TakeOver San Antonio. So overall, I actually thought this was a good um, a good episode of NXT. Um, I enjoyed it. I liked the women's match. Um, the Authors of Pain I thought was really dominant on this show. Um, and I really enjoyed the Fatal 4-Way match. So overall, I thought this was a good episode of NXT. I thought, you know, you are, now you have your championship match set up for NXT TakeOver um, San Antonio. And uh, you're starting to build up some stuff for the women's division. And you're starting to build up some stuff for the tag team division. So overall, I enjoyed this week's episode of, uh, well, this episode of NXT, I should say.